Welcome to the RimWorld mod rundown. We'll be taking a quick look at what you can expect to see from Ra's Vanilla Turrets expansion. For starters, you won't need any additional workshop content. This is a super streamlined mod. I've covered a fair chunk of mods now that include additional security options, from scorpions and gatling guns right up to mobile turrets that can be fitted with auto mortars that don't require reloading, which goes some way in saying the variety and balance in these defences is often wild, with some struggling to hit the side of a mountain from a few feet away, whilst others obliterate entire faction bases from the safety of another map. If you want some options that are actually viable, thematic and fairly costed, Ra has you covered. The turrets expansion includes two gun complexes, five new turrets that can be built in automated or manned versions, one new, definitive, top tier of defence and one endgame mortar that will burn through your resources faster than a hot tub streamer with an OnlyFans link in their bio. Really easy to say at the top of this mod, this isn't the usual approach to adding player power. You're paying significantly more in steel, components, plasteel and things like frag grenades than you would for standard turrets or the majority of other modded content. But if you know how powerful turrets can be, to me anyway, this is the fairer approach. The biggest risk in RimWorld is always going to come from engaging with combat. Being able to set up defences that remove your colonists from combat and allow turrets or traps to handle the majority of it for you obviously becomes one of the strongest advantages you can give yourself in the game. So with Ra's turrets, you're either paying astronomical amounts to build enough turrets to handle entire raids for you, or you're mixing a few of them in to take down enemies faster while still requiring active participation from your combatants. Which is a lot of words to essentially say, this is fairly well balanced. Why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. Well then, let's get these turrets covered. You're getting eight new research projects with this, requiring vanilla gun turrets research to be completed to unlock the first bit of new tech, the gun complex. When building this complex, you'll also be building the fortification that it sits on top of, splitting the cost between the gun and the low wall. This means if you build a granite gun complex rather than steel, you're saving yourself some of that lovely expensive steel and getting more health for the emplacement. This is one of those solid use cases for bioferrite if you're playing with Anomaly, as it offers awesome durability, and for me at least, I'm normally drowning in this resource by mid-game thanks to the harvesters, so it helps clear some of that stockpile down. This emplacement has the base accuracy of 96%, which means when used, it's performing about the same level as a colonist with 8 skill in shooting and no mitigating health conditions. So consider carefully who you're putting on these gun complexes, as weaker ranged combatants will see a meaningful improvement by using this, over an awesome sniper that actually sees their performance drop. Not only that, traits like Trigger Happy or Careful Shooter seem to have no impact on manning these weapons, so you'll get more damage keeping your Trigger Happy fighters using their standard guns. Compared to standing behind a full wall for cover when fighting that would give you 75%, you'll see cover effectiveness drop to 60% on these emplacements, so shots are more likely to land on colonists hunkering behind the machine gun. It does offer 5% more than carrying behind a sandbag or a barricade though, so it's not all doom and gloom. You want to make sure these early emplacements are arranged in a way that plays into their range, as you can only hit targets up to 32 tiles away so bolt action rifles and, obviously, sniper rifles will be free to take pot shots at them all day without some kind of funnel or corridor. Finally, for actual stats, it stores enough ammunition for 150 shots before taking 100 steel to rearm. It's dealing one more damage than a standard mini turret, has three more range, 2% more penetration, but a lower base accuracy across the board. It makes up for this by going the route of saturation with just a 0.2 second aiming time and a 0.66 cooldown, so these things do quite dramatically up the density of the lead element in the local atmosphere. Don't breathe this! Next you can research the rocket complex, working the same way as that gun complex with equal cover and base accuracy. This is going to need high explosive shells to construct, as well as a good chunk of steel and components. After 10 shots it'll take 5 more HE shells to rearm, so you're going to need a do until you have bill with pause when satisfied ticked, keeping your stockpile topped up to make sure these are viable for more than just one or two raids. As you'd expect with something called a rocket complex, this is going to deal significant area damage to incoming threats. It's really useful to soften up the first wave of an attack, with its viability dropping the closer enemies get, 
due to its somewhat chunky ranged cooldown of 8 seconds. You're going to want to be extremely careful with where these are placed, as the bonus damage they deal will absolutely chew through any of your own defensive walls, likely opening up the floodgates for raiders to pour in at an increased rate and overwhelm your kill box. These emplacements can be uninstalled and moved as needed though, so consider keeping one or two of these in storage that you can swap out with standard gun emplacements, if you're using them. That way, you can change over to explosive damage that has higher penetration for when high tier enemies show up, as these tear through, and outrange, some of the large mechanoid threats. From there, you've got blast turrets. These are also going to require microelectronics to have been researched as well. This is one of the first turrets that comes with two variations, automated and manned. They both have exactly the same material requirement, but all automated versions are going to consume twice the power of a manned one. On top of that, automated turrets come in with worse stats. They have lower firing rates, burst counts, shorter ranges, less reliable accuracy, and longer aiming or cooldown times. So you do need to consider if these turrets are being built to be manned by a specific colonist, acting as their ranged weapon, or if they're constructed as an additional source of damage to supplement your firing line. When going over the turrets with these variants, I will show the stats of the automated and manned versions side by side, but speak on its performance as if you're using a manned version, because that's going to be the best case scenario. The turrets don't provide as much cover as a complex, offering just 40%, so you're going to want a barricade or sandbag between this and the incoming damage ideally, to get a larger source of cover in the way and act as an obstruction for incoming shots. Whereas the rocket complex had considerable range, the blast turret values saturation instead, with its 5 projectiles exploding in a 5x5 diamond pattern compared to the rocket's 5x5 square, minus corners. Each grenade does slightly less damage, which doesn't really mean a lot when there's potentially 4 additional explosions that can hit the target. The biggest downside to this turret is that it only has 25 range, with a fairly lengthy cooldown and a pretty wide dead zone. Not that you'd want to be firing a bunch of grenades at your own feet anyway, but it becomes difficult to fire reliably as it cannot target the ground, so getting shots to land consistently at the entrance of your kill box, rather than going into the corridor and just blasting the crap out of your own walls, is frequently going to be an issue with this. The biggest problem that you'll face with a turret is that after it's dumped 40 shots, it costs 4 more frag grenades to rearm it. That's 800 work, 80 steel and 320 chem fuel worth of weaponry. It wouldn't be that bad if your enemies were reliably bringing in grenades to try and use as weapons, but if they are, and you're using this, chances are any drop weapons are being blown the fuck up in the process of it firing, so it's making its own refuels more expensive. Congratulations, you played yourself. The next research is a significant step up. Sure, let's cover the big daddy mortar. This is going to need fabrication research and mortars as well as the previous blast turret project too. It unlocks the devastator mortar and the plasma power cell. Let's cover this cell really quickly. This is an item, not a mortar shell as you might initially think. It's used solely to build and reload the Devastator Mortar. A standard mortar will not be able to make use of it, with each cell costing 20 Plasteel, 5 Explosive Shells, and 2 EMP Shells to assemble, on top of taking over 600 work. If you happen to find these on a trader as a reward, or if you can snag them from an ancient complex, you're saving yourself a considerable amount of work here. And I'm sure it goes without saying, you want to keep these as far away from any potential danger as possible. They aren't exactly stable when damaged. Now that we know how expensive these cells are, let's look at the mortar. It needs 200 of any metal to build its frame, 400 steel, 80 plasteel, 80 uranium, 2 advanced components and one of those power cells. Oof. This is also going to need 500 watts of power on top of a colonist to man it with you wanting that colonist packing a huge shooting and intellect skill, as wasting shots with this is downright criminal. The mortar itself fires in 5 round bursts, with a range that can reach from edge to edge on any standard vanilla map. Not only that, each projectile explodes in a 7x7 radius, minus the 3 tiles on the corners, for 30 damage. This is coming in with a pretty hefty miss radius, a large aiming time and a 60 second cooldown. Not only that, because it fires in 5 round bursts, you get 4 salvos from the mortar before it needs rearming, and it takes a goddamn plasma cell to rearm it. 
so chances are this is a weapon most players will build for when they really need it and then never use, watching their colony burn whilst it sits idly in the back of the base on full ammo. It's really difficult to justify this for most vanilla threats though, as big mechanoids have a large enough health pool that this just dents them, with the EMP shells included in making the power cell not actually providing a stun effect either. And if you were to use this against a human raid, it's insanely overkill, compared to building 3 or 4 standard mortars and using normal, cheap, high explosive shells. If they're going to be standing still for long enough to be hit by a mortar anyway, you can easily man multiple weapons and cycle reloads to saturate the staging area, rather than using one large, extremely expensive salvo from a single mortar. What I saw that day was the most awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Now onto the lower row of research. First up, requiring microelectronics is the Sentry Gun project, unlocking the automated and manned versions of the Sentry Gun and Shredder turret. The Sentry Gun is an upgraded mini turret, offering an additional burst, higher range, better accuracy, a faster aiming time and a shorter cooldown. It surpasses it everywhere it counts, even in the automated version, with the man turret being vastly superior. This of course does come at a cost, it needs a bit more power, takes an additional 70 steel for the shroud, 110 more steel for the turret itself and 2 more components. Fortunately this comes in with a far chunkier ammunition box, being able to take 150 shots before it requires rearming, costing 100 steel to completely refill its dacker. The sentry gun becomes the new baseline for affordable and reliable turrets, providing a nice middle ground between the seemingly laughable output of a mini turret without needing the floor space or investment of something like an auto cannon or a uranium slug turret. Especially useful when manned as it will outrange almost everything besides sniper rifles, so it's far more capable of holding down a long open kill box that relies on feeding raiders into saturation fire. The Shredder turret on the other hand is a different beast, like a chain shotgun had hate sex with an auto cannon. Surprisingly affordable at just 100 of any metal, 250 steel and 5 components. This fires 5 round bursts with dangerously high accuracy at a range of 25 for 21 damage each. Not only that, it has a rapid aiming time and an extremely short cooldown. This is perfect for a tight quarters defence when you're feeding enemies through tight winding corridors and just obliterating them the instant they turn their head around that final corner, with the turret itself also being entirely safe from exploding if it takes too much damage, so you don't have to sweat chain explosions across your defences if one of these takes too many hits. The main downside to this turret is how much steel it chews through, with the manned version using its 5 round burst, that's just 16 full salvos before it will demand 160 steel. The next project is precision turrets, with this also requiring precision rifling. As you would expect, this is going to get you manned and automatic versions of the precision turret that operates like a fully stabilised and optimised sniper rifle. This is one of the only turrets that comes in with a slightly higher base accuracy rate of 98% rather than 96, meaning this provides even more of a bonus to people with terrible shooting skills. For 150 of any metal, 200 steel, 40 plus steel and 5 components, you're getting a 50 range, 42 damage, 63% penetration, rapid fire marksman's dream, with the manned version having a shot cycle time of just 1.8 seconds, so it's firing 2 rounds in the same time it takes a normal sniper rifle to simply aim. If you've got the resources to burn, a straight kill corridor making use of this is extremely effective, it will allow you to outrange everything even pikemen, and it provides a fast enough firing time that anyone who does manage to survive the opening salvo is rapidly corrected by the second wave of shots. This doesn't replace the uranium slug turret either, as that still packs more of a punch with a higher penetration percentage, it just doesn't fire anywhere near as quickly as the precision turret can. Just be aware that every shot taken with this turret is costing you 4 steel, as a complete rearm of its 40 round capacity is 160. On from precision, you then have the Vulcan Cannon, which makes use of the multi-barrel weapons research too. This is the last manned and automatic weapon variant, taking what the auto cannon does and instead asking, if we lower the damage a little bit, how much could we invest in other stats? 
So rather than 27 damage, 3 round burst at 33 range, you're now getting 12 damage, 10 round burst over 48. This thing drinks through your resources like there's no tomorrow, with it essentially having no aiming time, nor cooldown, and a full rearm costing 400 steel. Not only that, to get this thing up and running it demands 400 metal or stone for its foundation, 400 steel for the weapon, 100 plast steel for the shroud, and 8 components to tie it all together. As this weapon is massive and mounted on its own defensive platform, it provides a whopping 80% cover to any colonist manning it, making it more effective than standing behind a wall. The main downside to this cannon over something like the precision turret is the lack of armour penetration. This will frequently see bounce after bounce when shooting against a target that's wearing even simple flak armour, and whilst its saturation will eventually bring them down, it doesn't pack the stagger to stop them creeping ever closer. It's fun to make a wall of them in dev mode, but I could never justify the cost of this in an actual colony. It's madness. And finally, that leads us into the charge cannon, needing pulse charge munitions and giving you a true endgame turret option. This only comes in with an automated version, so no need to compare the stats on this beast, needing a simply biblical 100 metal or stone, 500 steel, 100 plus steel and 5 advanced components, it aims to make up for this cost by providing you with a 60 damage shot at 75 penetration over a range of 50. Now this turret's accuracy rapidly drops off when enemies close in, so either you need to support it for targets that slip through its outer ring, or aim to keep all targets within that outer range by building heavily around long distance engagements. Fortunately, it stays right on top of targets that do enter its range with essentially no aiming time and a 0.6 second cooldown, making it combine the speed of the Vulcan cannon with the damage of the precision turret. Although you might hate it for firing that quickly when you see it costs you 80 plus steel to rearm it every 40 shots. On the plus side, this makes every single unmodded faction raid look like a complete joke, with it packing the potential to kill centipedes in just 3 rounds. And that's it, Ra's Vanilla Turrets Expansion, something that makes you actually pay for defensive power, and want to pay for it, which is important. So often with modded content, the colonist gear that's included outpaces stationary defences to such an insane degree, it becomes hard to justify using a static defence outside of the usual turret that's just triggering raiders into a conga line formation when they walk through your corridors. Now you've actually got some potential choices that are powerful, without being spammable, granting colonists that have very little passion in combat a viable role in raid defence too. Now they man the murder shotgun that keeps breaking your own killbox and draining your steel stockpile. Perfect. Thanks for watching folks, if you have any mods you'd like to see a full breakdown for or suggestions of mods you'd like to see covered, feel free to leave them in the comments, I might get around to them. I'll be back again soon with another RimWorld mod rundown. Wherever you are in the world, enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon or evening. Take care.